Hello everyone and welcome to another casual review. Today I'm talking about new Pokemon Snap. You gotta love the naming conventions of Nintendo games and platforms rather than calling it Pokemon Snap 2, which has a much better ring to it. They decided to call it the new Pokemon Snap. Still though, despite the name, I think that it has a fantastic game and I I definitely have a lot to talk about. Now I was a huge fan of the original Pokemon Snap back for the original Nintendo 64. Now that game only took about three hours for me to 100% complete it, probably because I have such vast knowledge about that game. I just know exactly what to, what pictures to take, where to go, what signs to take. And so while it may take someone longer, it is actually a pretty short game. So there was a lot of concern whether this new Pokemon Snap game would be worth the price tag of a full price video game. And I can absolutely assure you there is a ton of content here and I'm excited to get all into it. Now, while we're comparing the older Pokemon Snap to the new one, um, actually, we actually have a reoccurring character here from the original. Todd, the original photographer that you play in the original Nintendo 64 game, is actually one of the main characters in this game as well. There are a couple of newer characters. Um, Professor Oak is not in this game at all. Instead, he is replaced by a new character known as Professor Mir. And while Professor Mir is no Professor Oak, he is certainly a, a charming character and he's very likable. He has an assistant and Todd also has an assistant. So you also have the two other kids because uh, it is a Pokemon game. So you yourself are playing as a kid. And um, so th out of those uh, five characters, it is some nice uh, variety rather than just talking prof to Professor Oak in the original Nintendo 64 game. Now these characters don't do a whole lot. They basically just give you little tips and tricks. And as you are taking pictures in the game, they will make little comments like, wow, that picture will turn out really good. It was looking right at you or, oh man, I wish I was able to take that picture. So just little quips like that. Now there is also some full voice acting clips here, mainly just during the uh, short little cinematics that are in between story beats. But um, otherwise it is just uh, them talking and just saying like with the text, they'll just say little words like, oh, Really? Here's the thing, just little short things like that. They won't actually read the full text, but at least it's something to help you feel a little more immersed. Visually though, this game looks stunning. So if you aren't familiar with the Pokemon Snap games, the genre, then uh, let me just kind of do a quick little elevator pitch for you. Imagine if you will, you are at an amusement park, let's say Disneyland, and you are on one of the slower rides, like uh, It's a Small World or Peter Pan, just one of those like really slow moving rides where you are just basically like in this little cart and you observe the animatronics around you. Well, instead of a amusement park ride, you are out in the wilderness on a curated path. And instead of animatronics, it's Pokemon living in this environment. And it is your job to take stunning pictures of these Pokemon doing cool things. And then you evaluate them at the end of the course. Now there are certain categories that your photographs will get judged by Professor Mir uh, depending on a certain level of things. So one is if it's dead center, don't try to get off center, artsy, nothing like that, just right in the center, that's some points there. Uh, make sure that no parts of the Pokemon are being cut off here. Now you can zoom with the camera. Sometimes it's not always best for you to do that though if, if you want to get the whole Pokemon in the picture. You don't want to cut off any body parts or anything like that. You want it to be looking right at you and then you want it to be doing something interesting sometimes they'll just be standing still and you won't get as many points as if they were are like roaring at you so as you are playing through these courses, you're going to be replaying these courses over and over again, because granted, there is a ton of stuff going on here. You can look all around you in 360 degrees, and you are bound to miss a couple of the things during your first couple runs of these courses. But don't feel overwhelmed, because you have plenty of excuses to come back to these courses. For one, every time you come back to a course and take new pictures with more point values, you will kind of upgrade your course experience and and that basically means like the Pokemon will become a little more familiar with you and they will get closer to you and interact with you. Sometimes you will start seeing newer Pokemon that weren't on the course during the first level of the course. And so it almost feels like you're XP grinding doing these courses over and over again, trying to level up this course in order to get the Pokemon to become a little more familiar with you and do some more exciting things. Sometimes you can even uncover alternative pathways throughout this course, like 
uh, w during your default pathway of, let's say, the jungle, you will go around the waterfall, but sometimes you can uncover a different pathway to get behind the waterfall, and you might see a couple of uh, mud kips behind the waterfall that you otherwise wouldn't have seen if you went around it. Now, there are certain ways to interact with the Pokemon as well. You unlock these pretty early on in the game, the first being Fluff Fruit, and it looks like an apple. I'm told that it is very lightweight and it does not hurt Pokemon, but you are definitely incentivized to throw these Fluff Fruit at Pokemon, or at least near them. And Pokemon do like to eat these Fluff Fruit, depending on what their behaviors are. Um, but sometimes if you want to take an interesting photograph of a Pokemon, uh, Professor Mirror really likes it when you throw them at the Pokemon and, and uh, hurry and take a picture of them wincing. And he will even make little comments depending on what the Pokemon is doing. So if I throw a Fluff Fruit at a Pokemon and hurry and take a picture of it, he always makes a comment like, oh, looks like it was bopped by something. And I, you know, in my head, I'm like, oh, that's weird. I wonder what could have done that. But uh, it always seems to grant you more points that way. The whole photography system is a little complex where in the original Pokemon Snap, you just had to take a picture of a Pokemon doing something interesting and get it mostly in the picture and in the center. In this one, it is divided by four categories. So let's just say Pikachu to keep things simple. There are four different tiers of Pikachu pictures that I can take from one star to four star. And uh, that just depends on how um, action worthy the pictures are. It, I feel like it didn't really do a great job explaining this, but let's say if I'm just taking a picture of Pikachu's back, that would be considered a one star photo. Now, if I took a picture of Pikachu surfing on a surfboard, this isn't in the new Pokemon Snap, it was only in the original, but um, doing some sort of a unique activity like that, that would be considered a four star photo, and then it varies in between for two star and three star. Now, a one star photo could still be worth more points than a four star photo, assuming like how close I was to the Pokemon, um, how well it was in frame, how centered it is, and then a four star could be like super far away, and that's why it wouldn't be worth as many points. And so in order to 100% complete this game, you would have to get one, two, three, and four star photos of every single Pokemon that is in the game. So it definitely seems like a ton of content here. Don't feel like it is a short experience and you won't get your money's worth here because you absolutely will. There are a ton of courses here. I want to say maybe like 10 different courses, but before you start saying that's not enough, there are night variations of most of these courses as well, which offers different Pokemon, different scenes. There's even some extra free downloadable content that that I play through like one shrinks down your ship that you are riding through it basically like makes it really teeny tiny so you are seeing these gigantic caterpie and giant bugs through the viewpoint of a tiny little insect so it's kind of neat how they are able to mix things up there one you're like going underwater during these like coral reefs and see all these underwater Pokemon you go into a cave there's like a snowy tundra lava tons of different biomes here to keep things fresh and interesting keep in mind, like I said earlier, each of these courses can be leveled up to uh, several times. I never maxed up a level, but I, I imagine from personal experience, the most that a course could be leveled up is four times, and uh, that is a lot of playing through for each course. This can start feeling a little repetitive if you are doing the same one over and over again, but there's always more to be doing, more pictures to be taken, more scores to be gotten, uh, more uh, star level photos to take, like let's say if you play through a core a level two course um, it doesn't hurt to play through the level 2 course again because you might get different star ratings for your Pokemon photographs. So let's talk about the actual Pokemon itself. It's really cool to see these Pokemon in their natural environment. So if you're playing through a regular Pokemon game, that's more taking an approach from a capturing perspective. Um, let's look at Pokemon Go. That's more like what if Pokemon Go were in our real world. But in Pokemon Snap, it's like what if we 
were in the Pokemon's real world. And it's cool seeing them interact with each other. It's cool seeing like manta rays flow under the water and just birds flying in the sky. There's like uh, monkeys swinging through the trees. It's like if Pokemon were real animals and you are just interacting with them in their world. Visually, this game looks so awesome and beautiful. There's a ton of courses here that almost feel magical. A couple of them stick in my mind at least, like one of them being the snowy tundra. It was just so cool seeing like the Mightyana chase fer ferrets like under the snow or like going to the lava level and seeing these slugma like jump into the lava and swim through it. It is just such a cool experience, especially if you are a big Pokemon fan. I think it is quite the treat to see some of your favorite Pokemon here interact with what their world would be like. There's a ton of different Pokemon here as well. Some of them that I'm not entirely familiar with and that's also why this game is such a good treat is because there is a lot of Pokemon that usually aren't in the spotlight here like obviously you see a lot of your Charizards and your Pikachus and your Squirtles but there are a couple that don't always get some uh, love like Wormpoles or Bidoofs or I, I'm not really familiar with a lot of their names but there's like the Swan ones or Ladians or yeah a Spinarax you don't see a lot of Pokemon like these that get a ton of representation so it's kind of cool to see some of these uh, get represented I want to say there's like what 800 or 900 different Pokemon at this point so some of them are bound to be um, under appreciated and this kind of helps me uh, recognize them for uh, the cool design that they have on top of that to kind of help you uncover some of the more hidden things that you may have missed during your some of your course playthroughs there are requests so if you go into the corner of the main menu, it'll say like, hey, I hear there is something hiding in the flower fields on this stage. Maybe you should go check it out. And then when you go there, you might uncover a Pokemon that you potentially missed during your playthroughs because they are a little more hidden. Or, hey, I hear if you throw this ball at this Pokemon, then um, they will do something unique. And so you do that, and then you might be able to get your four-star photo of this particular Pokemon that you are missing. There are other ways to interact with these Pokemon. Pokemon as well like one makes a you can play a little jingle that wakes up sleeping Pokemon one is you can throw this glowing ball at Pokemon to make them glow and uh, this brings me to the whole like plot point of this game is you are recruited by Professor Mir to this island full of Illumina Pokemon. There's this Illumina phenomenon which makes Pokemon glow and it's your job to take pictures of these Pokemon to kind of help Professor Mir study this phenomenon. And so as you are doing this research you unlock this uh, uh, Illumina ball that you can throw at Pokemon and that's what gives them this glowing effect. Um, the plot is, is kind of cool. Some of the uh, more bombastic moments. It, it's not like bosses because this isn't like a combat heavy game or anything like that. Um, but you see these giant Illumina Pokemon that take up a whole course on their own. And just taking pictures of these giant Illuminous Pokemon is, is such a treat. It is so magical in a way. As far as the music goes, I think I like the original Pokemon Snap music better than this one. Call it nostalgic if you wish, but it takes a very minimalistic approach. So it's a uh, very non-invasive and I feel like it was done that way on purpose to uh, kind of get you more into the natural world of Pokemon. It it doesn't feel very naturalistic when you're listening to this huge orchestral piece. Um, so when you're in the jungle, maybe you just want to hear the sounds of the jungle. And I feel like they, they took a big hint from Breath of the Wild in that minimalistic music approach. And so it fits here, but as far as if I was just listening to the songs on its own, I would definitely prefer Nintendo 64 Pokemon Snap over this one soundtrack. Now, once you take all of your pictures, you get them all graded, and if you are bored going through these courses taking pictures, there's a very impressive photograph mode. Now, obviously this would make sense in a game that is entirely focused around taking pictures, but you can edit your photos in a way um, that you can share on social media, tons of different filters, and um, you can move around the uh, camera perspective if you want. You can change the um, aperture of the picture to make things in the background a little more blurry. Just tons of uh, customization here so you can really share your photos. And as you unlock these achievements by playing through the game, you can unlock more features on your photo editing mode. You can also unlock things for your own profile, things like a 
um, title for your character or, or a cu character icon, just little things like that. So when you're playing with friends, you can compare and contrast achievements and titles, that kind of stuff, which is always a nice addition for a game like this that completely it lends itself to social media. Now, by the end of the game, I don't think I got anywhere close to 100% completing this game, but I have done a ton of stuff. It does let you see uh, some of the stats in the option menu. So I can tell you that I have 10 hours of gameplay in this game and I have taken 4,259 photos after I rolled the credits and ran all of the post-credit courses at least once. So there is still a ton of more stuff that I can do. Don't feel like you won't be getting your money's worth if you buy this game at full price. It is a full game through and through. And if you are a Pokemon fan, I absolutely recommend it. There's one technical issue though that I have to point out here. And while the game does look beautiful and realistic and probably the best I've ever seen a Pokemon game look, sometimes when you get a Pokemon moving really fast or you aren't focused, on a moving Pokemon and they're more in the background, they can appear a little choppy, like their frame rate is significantly dipped. And uh, I don't know if this is just a sacrifice that they had to make in order to get this game to run on the Nintendo Switch correctly, but just a little technical issue that I noticed. Other than that though, no uh, hard crashes or anything like that. I think I can definitely recommend this game for a Pokemon fan. I personally would give this game a four out of five, an absolute treat. Thanks mom for buying this for me for my birthday. If you want to borrow it, let me know. It, I think it would be fun to even play together. And if you have played new Pokemon Snap, please let me know some of your favorite memories or even share some of your favorite photographs of this game because there are a lot of cool memories and scenes that can be captured here. It's sometimes a breath of fresh air just to play a game that's not focused in combat at, at all. Now, don't get me wrong. I am a huge combat heavy fan. I love to play games that are packed full of combat, but it's nice to just kind of you know, we're not fighting anything. We're not trying to defeat anyone. We're just trying to take pictures of nature. It's, it's nice. It's a breath of fresh air. All right, that's it for me. I'll talk to you later. Bye.